It is six o'clock on your Thursday. So glad you could join us here on Sunrise as we're talking about Christmas movies. Among other things this morning, we want to get your take on what your favorite Christmas movie is. We just heard that the state of Minnesota overwhelmingly likes National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah, it's a classic. Not a surprise there. Not yeah. a surprise at all. Let us know your favorite. We'll be getting to your answers and responses coming up in this hour. But first, we get to get to Guy because it is downright cold. It sure is. Skies are very clear. In fact, you can still see Mars. So just go right over to your window and take a look right beneath the moon. It's beautiful. No telescope needed. Uh, right now you have temperatures finally in the double digits here. We were in the single digits earlier this morning. Clear skies in the forecast. We could see some patchy fog develop mid to late morning hours. Shouldn't slow things down or turn widespread, but just a heads up there. We got clear skies, some, you know, snow on the ground, some low level moisture. So heads up with the fog. Sunshine in the forecast today. I'll let you know those afternoon high temperatures, plus some snow looks to move in overnight. Alicia. All right, Guy, thanks. I was tracking about four different crashes here around the metro, but they all cleared pretty quickly. That one you see along 169 in New Hope, that one just cleared here minutes ago. We'll give you a traffic camera view. You can see 49th Avenue. Roads are clear for now. We'll give you another check of the map. You can check your own route. Off to a decent start for this Thursday. Now to our top story, flu cases are spiking around the state and maxing out capacity in emergency rooms. And this morning, some schools are switching to remote learning because of illnesses. Take a look at this graph. A, a K-12 through 12 school report from the state health department classifies an outbreak of flu-like illnesses when the number of students absent from it reach 5% of total enrollment. The red line shows a peak two weeks ago with over 700 outbreaks reported this season. Yeah, it's a huge peak. Jen's joining us from Abbott Northwestern West Health out of Plymouth. Good morning, Jen. Yeah, good morning. And what's really the issue here, Alicia and Chris, it's not just the flu cases you mentioned, though that is problematic, but we've also got COVID cases and a surge in RSV, all making uh, things very busy for doctors, nurses, everyone at, at healthcare clinics and hospitals. But it's also causing problems at schools. We've previously reported on some school districts moving to remote learning just because of the number of illnesses popping up in their schools. Bertha Hewitt School District, just south of Wadena, is the latest to do so. Of course, winter is the time for sickness. We have more people congregating indoors, but doctors tell us that this year kids are getting hit especially hard. Children are more susceptible in general because of a lot of the current illnesses that are in our communities they have not seen in their life. Keep them home, keep them safe, and let them return to school based on their school policy. Yeah, so things get really bad. Sustained high fever, your child or yourself has trouble breathing, of course, go into the ER, go to the hospital. But otherwise, doctors say really avoid doing that. If your symptoms are milder, you should be calling your primary care doctor first, maybe doing a virtual visit because that will really help these health care systems, which are just getting bogged down right now with all this uh, sickness going around. Yeah, good information to know. Thank you for that, Jennifer. The CDC says your best protection from the flu is a flu shot. This year's dose, they say, is a good match for the circulating strains, but Americans are not taking advantage. According to the CDC, flu vaccines are down 12% for pregnant women compared to this time last year. They're down 3% for seniors, and 5% less kids have their shot compared to before the pandemic. The Minnesota Health Department says just 33% of Minnesotans are vaccinated for the flu. The BCA is releasing new information about the police shooting of a man in St. Paul Monday night. Meanwhile, his family is demanding release of the body camera footage. The BCA says the evidence so far shows Howard Johnson exchanged gunfire with police. Before that, he approached a woman's car pointing his gun at her. Johnson's family says if that's true, and there should be no delay in releasing video that proves it. That is my child. I deserve to know what happened to him. We deserve to know what happened to our, fam to our family members. We deserve that much. Give that much to us. Authorities say they are considering releasing the video. Police initially responded after a 911 caller reported that Johnson assaulted her and warned that he was armed with a gun. In just a few hours, the Minneapolis City Council is expected to vote on a controversial proposal to improve police oversight. Minneapolis currently has two civilian groups, one private and one public, that are tasked with review and oversight of the police department. The new proposal, if passed, would merge those two bodies into one, a community commission on police oversight. City officials say it will streamline the process of handling civilian complaints against MPD officers. But some argue it's not effective enough and are asking the vote be delayed. 
Developing right now, the ATF and Minneapolis Fire and Police need your help this morning. They're looking for information about a fire at a vacant apartment complex in the city's south side. It happened last Saturday. They're offering a $5,000 reward for solid information. Federal responders are sifting through the wreckage to determine a cause, but are hoping information from the public will help them narrow it down. The popular Excelsior shop Truffle Hill Chocolates plans to reopen tomorrow. It's been closed for over a week since the owners say they were burglarized and vandalized. The vandals are accused of stealing a computer, money and spraying fire extinguishers over all the chocolate. Truffle Hill says it's online sales pause, but you can still pop in to shop this holiday season. This morning, Anoka had been schools. The largest school district in the states has a new leader. Uh, the school board just voted to give Corey McIntyre the job. He's the superintendent at Osseo area schools right now. CC is live in Anoka with what's next. Good morning, CC. Good morning. So now the district will start contract negotiations with McIntyre and then if that works out, he'll start in July. But the district spent weeks narrowing down these candidates and then last night the school board voted five to one for McIntyre. But McIntyre is very well known in this district. He previously served as the district's associate superintendent of middle schools and executive director of student services before heading over to Osseo area schools. Now fast forward to now, McIntyre hopes to come back to the district and focus on improving the district's literacy and math and science outcomes, which he says are the benchmark for success. He says that success can only happen when everyone works together. So it's going to take not only us in the school setting, but it's going to take our families to work with us. It's going to take our communities to support our efforts in schools and our us working with our community opportunities and partnerships to help leverage the kind of unique things that would benefit our, our students. Now McIntyre will be replacing David Law, who decided to take a job as superintendent over at Minnetonka schools. Chris Alicia. Thanks, CC. In just hours, workers at MSP International will hold a rally and a march. Workers say they want their minimum wage to be set at $15 to ensure they all have affordable health care. The march begins this morning at 11 outside the Terminal 2 Fire Department. More than $781 million. That's how much the St. Paul City Council is approving for the city's 2023 budget. The money will help improve neighborhood safety and prevent gun violence. It will also be used for affordable housing, anti-theft street lighting initiatives, and increased park maintenance. In addition to spending for next year, the budget also includes a 14.6% property tax levy. The Bloomington City Council is considering a big funding bump for a development near the Mall of America. At a special meeting last night, the council discussed a potential $40 million spending increase, which is on top of $55 million in spending that was approved earlier this year. The council says the money would be earmarked to support new infrastructure near the mall. Some of the proposed developments include a water park, sports complex, or event and entertainment center. As the Gopher football team gets ready for their bowl game, the university is making sure that their head coach is going to stick around for a few more years. Yeah, they sure did. The U just offered P.J. Fleck a new deal that keeps him under contract one more year until 2029. According to the Star Tribune, Fleck's new contract will also give him a pretty significant salary boost from $5 million bucks a year to $6 million. Experts say the pay bump is needed to keep a coach like Fleck around as other schools get competitive. Especially when you look at all these new coaches coming into the Big Ten, they needed to stay competitive with what the salaries that other schools were offering. After an eight-win regular season, Fleck's work isn't done just yet. The Gophers are headed to the Pinstripe Bowl in New York City on December 29th. They play Syracuse in that one. Ooh, it should be a good matchup. Uh, the coach, we had some sound from him saying, you know, there are a lot of players that have never been in New York City, so mm -hmm. besides the game, they're excited to see the, you know, the Rockefeller Taking Christmas tree. Taking it all tree. in. Take it all in. Yeah, maybe uh, PJ can buy him a meal with that hefty yeah. race. <laughs> hey, coach, you just got a, <laughs> yeah, another exactly. meal this year. Yeah. Spread it around. All right, let's switch gears to the forecast. Uh, get ready for a blast of cold when you walk out the door this morning because, yes, we're sitting at 10 degrees. We've warmed up we're, slightly, guys. Yes, I know. We're making a little bit of some progress, too, this morning. Earlier on my drive-in, temperatures were right around 5 degrees, so we are warming up a little bit, and some patchy fog could develop as we get closer and closer to daybreak. So we're watching that. 
Now, I don't see any chances for any widespread fog advisories or anything like that, but some patchy fog possible. You can see not yet here in the Twin Cities Metro. I still have clear skies and a good shot at the moon, too. Very beautiful shot. Crystal clear out there. 10 degrees, winds light, so it actually feels like the air temperature. But later this morning, winds could pick up just a little bit, and it could feel sub-zero or single digits or close to that. And then we make big progress. Temperatures warm up to the upper 20s. Just wind shaving off a couple of degrees here or there feeling more like the low 20s by the afternoon. So much better as long as you bundled up more tolerable on the skin as you get to the afternoon. Sunshine in the forecast today. No weather hazards to really slow you down whatsoever. It isn't until overnight after midnight where we're tracking some snow. This time tomorrow morning, we could see some snow showers just kind of kick off. Now, not expecting this to be a big accumulating event for us here in the Twin Cities Metro, but a whole different case scenario as you go off to the south and southern Minnesota towards the Iowa State line where the storm is tracking further southward. So coming up in about 10 minutes, I'll talk about some winter weather advisories that are uh, will go in effect this evening and expire tomorrow morning for southern Minnesota where they can see uh, anywhere between two to five inches of snow flurry Saturday and the seven day forecast here coming up also in about 10 minutes. Thanks guy. We look forward to that. We're days away from the Minnesota Nordic ski opener. It's happening on Saturday at Elm Creek Park Reserve in Maple Grove. Bring the whole family for free ski rentals, mini lessons and activities on and off the snow. Fun starts at 9 a.m. Go to care11.com slash community for more information. Wordle. A popular game took the world by storm this year, and I'm actually still playing it. Are you? Did yeah. you get it today? I got it today. Okay. All right. Well, after the break, we're going to see how popular it really was on Google's New Year in search list. Of course, we're not going to help you with today's puzzle. No, You're not going to spoil I won't it for anybody. It. No, no. Okay, we'll keep good. it hush hush. Plus, <laughs> a Minneapolis filmmaker is helping BIPOC kids have a happy holiday with donated toys. Where to find drop off boxes around the metro, and what makes each one unique? And it is Christmas movie season. We are telling you which one is the most popular in the United States. But we're curious this morning, which one is your favorite? Text us 763-797-7215. Someone just tweeted me four Christmases. I forgot oh, how yeah. funny that was. I, I've seen that. So